Gar Gillies never got rich, <laughs> okay, and he knew what it was like to to go to go without, and he was a musician himself. So he had he had this built-in empathy for you know for for the for the for the plight of the of the young rock and roll guy. The Guess Who is one of many bands that benefits from Gar Gillies. Gar gives the group free equipment in exchange for their endorsement of Garnet amplifiers. That doesn't mean much when both the band and Garnet are trying to make a name for themselves. But the collaboration results in Gar designing new equipment based on their needs. Our input was more, more from a, uh, a user point of view, well try this. We were running around with oh, 20 pieces of stuff between the amplifiers and the speaker cabinets, you know, and there were photo sessions and there were endorsement contracts and there was, you know, there was, it, became, it became a business. Gar's amplifiers are affordable, powerful, and sound as good as the big name brands. But they're not a big name. So many musicians customize their Garnet amps. We went through the same things. We used to say, like, why bother putting nameplate on them? These guys uh, will, you know, just pop them off, you know, because <laughs> they wanted them to look like American amplifiers. It was Canadian, and we were always second class. That changes in 1970. The Garnet name and the Garnet sound go worldwide when the Guess Who cracks a monster hit. It was very important. It was the only number one record that the band ever had. The band became an international success. It wasn't just something that was, that was running around in Winnipeg or Western Canada, or Canada itself. I mean, all of a sudden you're in the big plot. We became synonymous with the equipment. American Woman features guitarist Randy Bachman playing a Gibson Les Paul guitar into a Garnet amplifier. Bachman uses another Garnet device called a Herzog to distort the guitar's sound. The Herzog is another pioneering effort by Gar. It was an excellent one, as good as ever has existed to overload the input stage so that you'd make the string not just a ding, you know, it would hum like a violin string being bowed. Uh, that's what the, the musicians were really looking for. My love of Garnet, it's the simplicity of the circuit. There's nothing that gets in the way of what you're trying to do. This is my effects rack right here. I have no effect pedals. So this is it right here. I've taken Garnet schematics to uh, like my amplifier repair guys down in, in Texas and they just they look at the schematic and we're like, it's beautiful. It's like art that only an electrician can <laughs> can truly appreciate. The guy looked at it, he almost wept. You know what I mean? And how simple it was. And how does it, how does it sound so good? Well, it could be that could be the reason why. In those days, we were all experimenting right from the very bottom up, you know, but he <laughs> built good stuff. The new product would really turn him on and he would work night and day to, to get a prototype made. When he got an idea, he was relentless in trying to get a perfect product. The mid-70s are the glory years at Garnet. Gar is designing and building a full range of sound equipment. He hires a general manager to help build the company. Basically it was to build the Garnet name and sell Garnet amplifiers across North America. It was always interesting, it was never dull. We were starting to get some of the better dealers across Canada and uh, a few in the U.S. were happening for us as well. And uh, probably that period was likely the healthiest in, in the Garnet history.